Nintendo 64 Fun Time. What is up YouTube, Nintendo 64 Fun Time coming back at you today. Today we have a wonderfully splendid video for you and the reason why is we're doing something a little different. Today instead of talking about video games, we're going to talk about board games and I have a selection of some board games here that are probably ones you may have not heard of before. Um, they're, they're not as common of, of board games but our family plays a ton of board games. Me and my wife try to play board games all the time or card games or whatever have you and we absolutely love them. So I'm going to talk about just a few you may have not heard of before that I really really enjoy and I beg you to go try out. The first one that I'm going to talk about is Monopoly Deal. Now this one has been out for quite a while now um, but we got this kind of randomly. Uh, it's, it's very good as far as the price goes. It's only like four or five dollars. They tried a revision of the game and it's absolutely terrible so they came back and just did the original again. So now you can go buy this one pretty much anywhere that sells games. But I hate Monopoly so much. It is so boring to me and it's just exhausting. But this is taking the whole game, simplifying it into a very simple card game where you're basically just laying down properties. As soon as you get three sets of properties, you win the game. But the great thing is you're stealing money from other players, you're stealing properties, you're trading properties. It's very fun to play with two players or you can play, you know, three, four, five players. I've combined decks before and played with like eight to ten players and it's just it's a really fun game. Very very easy game to pick up. You can play with kids, you can play with your family, but so cheap, so easy to pick up. If you don't have Monopoly Deal and you like games of any kind, I beg you to pick this one up. It is so awesome. Another game kind of sticking on the card game genre and family friendly games, Sushi Go. Again, another cheap one. This one's right about $10. You can get this one pretty much anywhere you can find games as well. But this is really fun to play with, you know, four, five players. Um, it says you can play with two players, but it just wouldn't be as fun. And the reason why is because basically everybody starts out with. A large hand of cards you basically pick a card and you pass your deck to the left and you continue to just pass these decks and take a card from the deck and eventually you get kind of points you build points and you just keep playing until the rounds are done so you have to strategize hey what are they gonna take what are they gonna start collecting sort of thing so if you're only playing with two people um, it's a little bit more predictable but the more people you play with it's a little less predictable and you really gotta strategize on what cards you need to keep how many points you're gonna get and it's really really fun it sounds really really stupid but Sushi Go is awesome I definitely recommend it because like I said it's so cheap to pick up and it's, it is kid friendly but as an adult you can play and there's enough strategy to it to where you can really kind of get get going and get kind of angry and like picking cards and what are they going to get and people stealing your cards it's a really really fun one I definitely recommend Sushi Go continuing on one you may have not heard of before there's a few different versions of the game I have the dice version but bang the dice game there's also the original version which is just called bang um, but basically at the start of the game you pick a character card that you know gives your character an ability and then you're either um, an outlaw a sheriff you know a deputy or whatever so basically the whole point is of the game is to find out who the sheriff is if you're the outlaws and who the outlaws are if you're with the sheriff and you basically try to start shooting each other and trying to take each other out but the fun part is when you first start out the game you don't know which characters which so you might be shooting people that and attacking people um, you don't want to attack and then eventually you kind of figure out who they are so the more people you have with bang the better it is this can have up to eight players and if you have eight players 
it is absolute chaos. I would definitely recommend if you get bang, don't play with any less than five players because it's just not as fun. You find out who each player is very early on and it's just not as fun. The more players you have, the more mystery there is there and you're just shooting everybody. You don't know who's on your side and in the end it all kind of comes together and you're down to the last few bullets. It's very, very fun kind of a quick game, uh, but either the dice game or the actual game, they play very similarly, very, very fun. Now the next few games I have for you are pretty special, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to, actually these next two games I'm going to combine together, um, and I'll tell you why. So we have Forbidden Island and Forbidden Desert. Um, and the reason why I kind of want to group these two together is because Forbidden Island is very, very good with a low number of people, whereas Forbidden Desert is better with a higher number of people. Um, the premise between Forbidden Island is basically you are on some sort of ancient island and you have to collect a bunch of stuff before this island sinks. Um, it's harder with less people and you get to the point at the end of the game where you're literally like almost like dying and this island is sinking and you're running around and you do lose at this game. It's not an always win game and it's very frustrating when you lose because you it's always right at the end um, in this game but it keeps you wanting to come back. It, it's two to three players is about Max, you really don't want to do four because it gets really, really easy if you do that. Um, but basically, you're just trying to escape this sinking island. And the way the cards get set up uh, as the board, it's really, really fun and really, really cool. So if you have more than three players, I recommend Forbidden Desert. Kind of a similar situation where you're in this uh, desert. Uh, trying to escape this massive storm and you have to basically create this ancient airship to leave the desert. Um, so you're constantly ba battling this storm going around this desert and you're getting buried in sand and you know there's the sun that tries to kill you and you're collecting water and all this stuff. And the great thing about these games if you're if you're interested in these is you're always working together in both games you help each other out with their turns and there's no competitiveness because you're always fighting the game you're trying to win as a group if one person dies you all die so it's really fun to get a strategy not only of your own but a strategy that you know can help your whole team and you're helping your whole team out and everybody's kind of playing with each other and getting strategies and stuff. Really, 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 really fun games. Uh, Forbidden Desert's a little bit more expensive. I think Forbidden Island's about $20. This might be maybe $30 to $40, but this is really fun if you know people that like games, that don't mind board games. This might be a little much for people that not necessarily really like games. Um, this isn't one you can really just sit down and just play like Sushi Go or Monopoly Deal. This is one for people who probably really need to like games quite a bit in order to really really enjoy this one where you're it's just complete chaos at the end and you're fighting everything and you have narrow escapes or just narrow deaths and again if somebody dies in this one you all die because you're playing the game together now this last game I definitely recommend that everybody gets because it is an amazing party game if you have a few drinks, it makes this game more fun. Not that you have to drink to have fun, but when people get a little loose and can kind of, you know, yell a little bit and get out of their comfort zone, this game is quite a bit of fun. Camel Up. Um, or Camel Cup, whatever you want to say. I say Camel Up, but you can say it, you know, Camel Up or Camel up. I don't know. But this game is extremely fun. The more people you have, the better the game is. Um, 
let me see on here how many people you can have. Two to eight players. This game is just as fun with two players as it is with eight. The more players you have, the more fun it is. Basically, the idea of it is you have this racetrack, and these camels, your little pieces, will race around this track. Now, there's a handful of things you can do. You can progress a camel based off a dice roll, or you can bet on the camels. You can bet for, you know, the initial dice rolls, and then you can bet for, like, who will actually win or who will actually lose at the end of the race as they're going around this board. And the reason why it's so fun is because you every game is different and you never know what's going to happen you you can have a camel that's like way in the lead and the the one in the back could come back and just win the whole thing and everybody's just like ah, because they weren't bet not that one and it's just there's so much fun to this game um, this again is a very easy game so if you want to play with people who aren't very familiar with board games or who you know aren't hardcore into board games this is a very easy one to learn but it's so much fun and it's so much fun the more people you have very simple you're just betting on camels as they go around the board and basically whoever has the most money at the end of the game wins but this is definitely worth a pickup especially if you can find it for about 20 bucks it used to be way more than that I actually got an imported version and it's it was cheaper than buying um, the one in the stores in the states here uh, but very fun game very fun party game watch a YouTube video on this one maybe I'll set it up and show you guys a picture I'll pause for that picture I'll pause for that picture there you go anyway I'll set it up for you guys that way you guys can see it um, but super fun pick it up uh, Something a little different, if you guys don't like board games, I definitely recommend you do it. While video gaming is awesome, board games are something that you can just dive in with people who necessarily don't have experience as far as like, uh, you know, video games you like to play with people who have a little bit more experience and sometimes it's a little bit harder to find games out there that, you know, people who have no experience playing video games just to kind of get them into it. Board games aren't that way. I feel like there's plenty of games out there that I kind of just showed you that you can just bring people people in and have a really good time whether it's a party whether it's with your kids or just with your spouse or significant other um, so I hope you enjoyed this video I hope I gave you something a little bit different than just video games I like to do that from time to time but I love board games so much so I just wanted to tell you guys and show you guys my love for just a few games that I have so Anyway, there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. Feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I do a lot of participation there, and that's just another way you can participate in my channel. Please like and subscribe if you liked and want to subscribe to it. Anyway, Nintendo 64, fun time. Always be board gaming.